name is Bethany Stahl. I'm a full-time author and illustrator and today we are going to do a tutorial on uploading to Ingram Spark. If you are looking to learn more about self-publishing, go over to patreon.com slash Bethany Stahl. Here you will be able to chat with me via DM. You will also be able to access documents, behind the scenes videos, tutorials, everything that you can imagine I have over there and I am building resources every single week. So if you're looking for more information or more content or you want to download my templates or you just want to ask me some publishing questions, head over there and you'll be able to find all that good stuff. So let's jump into today's video. Hello friends, today we are uploading a book to Ingram Spark and this is going to be a hardcover. So I'm going to start right over here and click on add title. So first I'm going to add in the title. So this is save the sky. It is in English and I've gone ahead and put it in my ISBN. Now I do recommend buying your ISBN from the approved ISBN vendor for your country. If you are in the US, it is myidentifiers.com. So it is through Bowker and I do recommend purchasing one. Uh, so I've went ahead and put mine in. I own the copyright. I am now going to choose that I'm the author and put in my name. Now if you have other contributors of this book or you're required to list anybody else, whether that be co-authors, illustrators, editors, anything like that, you can go ahead and click on add a contributor here and add that. Since I'm the author illustrator, I typically will just leave it like this. Sometimes I'll go ahead and add myself as the illustrator because I will have people who are new to this series who will ask and don't know. So let me go down. My imprint is Bethany Stahl. Um, you will have to add an imprint in here if this is your first time, but this is going to be your company name. So my publishing house name is Bethany Stahl. My legal business name is Bethany Stahl. So that is why that is my name. So for those of you thinking I just put in my own name, I didn't. I know it's a little confusing, but that's actually my company's name. So now here I have chosen some subjects. You can choose up to three for your best results, which I do recommend. I was having a little bit of a hard time trying to find subjects for this, but let's go with environments or maybe light pollution. Environment. Okay, now my audience is going to be juvenile. I know it might be easy to try and pick elementary when you see this word, but these are for textbooks. So if you're writing a children's book like I am, you will want to pick juvenile. I went ahead and put in my age range and I need to pick my grade range. Typically it's kindergarten through third grade. I think my books get read the most by around the first grade group, but I have had my books read up to I've heard ninth grade teachers have used them um, <laughs> to illustrate the point, which I think is so cool. I, I think it would be so cool to like still see picture books in high school. So applause to that teacher. And then I've had them as young as in preschools. So it is a pretty big range, but I try to keep it around the average, which feedback I have gotten is about the first grade, second grade range seems to be that popular one. For the description of my book, I put in the full description that I wrote for my book on KDP. In your description, you want to tell a little bit about your book, you want to try and entice readers to read it, say why it's important, and just hit a few key things in there. Take your time with this, look at some other examples, and if you are still looking for help, we have on our workshop squad on patreon.com slash Bethany Stahl. You can vote for our monthly workshop to be on a book description where we work on tailoring each other's descriptions and help that get really refined. For keywords, you're going to want to think of things that people are going to look up. So what is your book about? This is about Dark Sky, Dark Side Reserve, Dark Sky Preserve, uh, Save the Earth series, Save the Sky, Children's Environmental series, and Light Pollution. Those are the first few things that come to mind that people would be looking up. 
Um, of course, try to add as many as you can, but that's all I could think about for my book. So I will leave that here. Don't forget there's this little field here where you can put in a short description. And typically I will just take this first little bit of my description here and fit it in. So you have a little bit less down here that you are allowed to include. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. So my trim size is eight and a half by eight and a half. Woohoo, I'm gonna do color. I do recommend premium color. I know in an older video I said authors, you know, couldn't necessarily tell the difference between the two and I had been advised by my friends that it didn't really make a difference. I have tested it out now. I have a video on that. I do now recommend premium color and it is also sometimes cheaper if you go with this option depending on what you choose despite the difference. So definitely don't count premium color out. I really, really do truly recommend it. I want this to be a hardback and case laminate is our only option here. And I do my covers glossy for the Save the Earth series. My page count is going to be 32 and the market is the United States. And that is my print cost per book. Woo! <laughs> that has gone up a lot since last time I have uploaded. So um, it's definitely changed. So here we're going to put in our retail price. I have typically done my hardcovers at $20. I find it hard to believe that anybody would realistically pay too much more than that. I obviously have my customers and my readers in mind first, and I want to be fair to them. Obviously, yes, it's great to make a lot of money, but first and foremost, I want to make sure my readers are able to afford a book if they want one. Now, this wholesale discount, I did used to recommend 55, but as you can see now, you're actually negative for your compensation. So in order for me to go with a full 55% discount and make comparable royalties to KDP, my book would have to be $30. And to be completely honest with you, I am just not okay with that. So I've been doing about $20 at 35%. Now I've been testing this and this is something I was worried about doing and how great it would impact my sales on Ingram Spark because I've worked with bookstores before. I'm in several bookstores right now and they did prefer to have that 55% discount. That being said, this 55% discount does not give the bookstore 55%. By the time it gets to the bookstore, it's significantly less. So understanding that I'm putting 35% here, that means what the bookstore is going to be significantly less. The issue with this is they're not going to be able to make as much as a profit as they would like off of your book. So they're also a business. They want a chunk of the profits. And that's where this discount comes in. What's been happening since I've changed my discounts down to 35 for the hardcover is I have noticed that my paperback sales have increased and I have also had bookstores start stocking my paperbacks instead of hardcovers, which I really don't have a preference on which they prefer to stock. Um, obviously that's up to them. So if I do it at $20 with a 35 discount, um, the compensation is still a little bit less than what I would make over on KDP. So it's just about fine tuning the details here and seeing what you can wiggle around with. So I, I'm not going to recommend any settings here for you. I, I am going to recommend that you all play around with this and just really see which balance will work right for you. I will update my patrons with what I decide to go with, but for now, I, I honestly, I, I think this part in my last video confused a few of you because you wanted to use the same settings and pricing changes over time. So I am going to recommend you play with a few numbers, think about what you'd realistically want to spend on your book, 
how much would you be comfortable with as a customer and then going from there and making the discount count as deep as you can but obviously pay yourself fairly okay i do want to enable look inside it helps sell the book i don't have large text or right to left publication date will be march 8th so if you open this down here, you will see an on sale date. Now this is something that you wanna consider for, for pre-orders. If you want pre-orders to be available, I want my on sale date to be March 8th. What that means is my pre-orders will sell, but the book will not ship until March 8th. If you set the on sale date to the current day or whatever day, prior to your publication date, that means your book will sell and ship to your readers. So that may be something you wanna do. I accidentally did that before and I suddenly realized a ton of people who I thought were pre-ordering were actually getting copies of my book. Uh, so that caught me a little bit off guard because I thought I was gonna have this huge launch day and it turned out people had been receiving their books the whole week prior to that. So if you do want pre-orders, go ahead and just set the on-sale date to be the same as your publication date. Okay, now I need to upload my print interior and my print cover. So I'm going to just go ahead and upload a print interior. And then I'm going to upload my print cover. Okay, so I have both of my interior and cover uploaded, so I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now I have gotten some weird errors through this. If you just save and exit and then go back in, it has seemed to fix it. A lot of times it seems that um, it thinks you didn't click things when you did. Uh, so just save and exit if you have any errors throughout this portion and it's not letting you continue on. So at this point, you are not publishing. You are just agreeing that you're going to pay their publishing fee and authorizing them to take your payment so you can have a book. This does not mean you're getting a copy. This does not mean that it is published. So this is just having it available in their system for you yourself at this time. So go ahead and proceed. Okay, so now what I have to do is I need to wait one to two business days for a file review. Sometimes this takes longer, I feel like, but once it goes through that, you will get an email where you can Approve your e-proof, but I highly recommend ordering a physical proof before approving it for publishing just because things can change from the e-proof to a physical copy. So always make sure that you get a proof of your book and then we will move on once I get these proofs to us and we'll see what comes next. Okay, so a few days have passed and I got an email asking me to approve my e-proof. I've gone ahead and just clicked on that link and I'm following the steps. I want to download a proof for my e-proof. That way I can look at it and make sure everything seems okay. So Ingram Spark quickly explains what to look for. Uh, what I like to look for is just that the cover cut marks line up properly which is what I'm doing now sometimes I'll use my computer screen sometimes I'll use a ruler and then I just scan through the inside and make sure that everything looks okay once we are to this screen I can approve this title for printing distribution and sale or I can approve it just for myself what I will start off doing is approving it just for myself. I will then recommend ordering a proof and then I'll come back and after I've seen my proof in person, I will then change that screen to approve it for sale and distribution. So here I'm just placing an order for Save the Sky. Be aware of their print and order turnaround times. Sometimes they change if you're by a busier season. So be aware and as always with Ingram Spark, try to order as far ahead as possible just so you give them enough time. 
So here you want to override the on sale date. What that means is you're allowed to get your proof immediately versus you having to wait to get a proof for when it actually publishes. So once you order, it should arrive in just a few days. You'll be able to look at your proof and then you will be good to go to approve it or make any necessary changes. So I got my proof so and I wanna enable it for distribution. So I'm just gonna click on that gray little world sign because that means your proof is not enabled for distribution. So up here at the top, I can see that I want to click that over to yes and I want to confirm yes. So I, again, want to make sure I am doing that. I don't do the promotions. I haven't done it through Ingram Spark, so I can't speak for or against it. Um, so again, I haven't used it. But once you approve it for distribution, you shouldn't have to pay anything else because you've already paid your fees. So go ahead and just accept that you are ready to have it enabled. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you all next time.